Dignity Matters, we provide free feminine hygiene products to homeless and low-income women and girls. We went from serving 4,000 women and girls each month at the beginning of March to now we're serving 8,000. So in that three month period, we had to double our capacity because the need just exploded. We provide free services to uh, childhood cancer patients, survivors, and families. In March is when a lot of the closures started happening. Our families stopped being able to go to their jobs safely. And it was very, very clear that whatever was gonna happen this year was not going to look the same. Uh, Metro West Free Medical Program is a nonprofit organization that serves the members of Metro West who are uninsured or underinsured by providing free medical services. And then once COVID-19 came in, we obviously had to make adjustments. We've gone from face-to-face -face meetings in clinic hours to actually telehealth. And uh, more than anything, we get food to people who need it. That's what we do. The whole operation changed. We had spent years planning a choice model pantry inside our facility, and it all had to be taken outside to be safe. We are a nonprofit based in Natick, serving families facing homelessness. When COVID hit though, our beautiful model of a community coming together all of a sudden became a health and safety issue. To have a foundation like Parma to give us a call and say, Sue, I know you're in trouble, what can we do? It was incredible. Um, we didn't miss a beat. We didn't miss a beat. My families were safe. Um, and not only safe, they were, they kept their dignity. We served a lot of emergency centers because we, under a regular situation, we would provide feminine hygiene cares at schools, at shelters, at food pantries. And we were still doing some of that, but obviously some of those things closed. We're gonna, we're gonna walk this path with our families and we're all gonna go through this together. And that means supporting them right now when they need it. We're really priding ourselves on the fact that um, over 85% of these families got money distributed to them within a day of applying. We're able to literally get it into that family's bank account same day or the next day. And for a family who's worried about their water being turned off this month, that makes a difference. Telehealth was only the only option uh, that we were able to, to go forward with. And now with telehealth, where they had symptoms, but they really weren't sure what it was. And we found out that after doing some, referring and getting some testing done, that they actually had forms of cancer that were in well into the second, third stage. And that if they weren't fortunate enough to connect with us, they very well could have passed away. We were doing much more uh, food rescue because a lot of these grocery stores needed us to come rescue where other rescue organizations weren't coming in. And uh, we went from picking up twice a week to 14 times a week. You know, people wanted to help throughout the community and so they started organizing food drives in their neighborhoods. So neighborhoods that never had reached out to us before, we would see them knocking on the door Monday morning with many SUVs full of food. To me, like the, the amazing thing to see is how so many people came together to say, how do we help these people? We have a great picture of one of our volunteers delivering to a food pantry through a window. So they didn't have um, contact, you know? And so I would say we got a lot of great response from that. I would ask members of the community to uh, think about these kids and kids who are on active treatment, kids who may be off treatment, but may be forever immune compromised as a result of their experience with cancer. Think about the vulnerable members of our community. Think of them, wash your hands, put on a mask, and stay home when you can. It's like anything, when something bad happens, you like to see something good come out of it. Literally, we've saved people's lives because that they weren't aware that they had life-threatening illnesses. The big message for Open Table is you have to collaborate. No longer can we be a standalone silo pantry where we open our doors and say, come on in. We have to reach out to uh, town officials, food service at high schools, 
local partnerships and say, how are we going to do this together? For people to get out of this and move on, there's got, they have to have a plan in place. One gesture of grace after another is really what we're seeing every day at Family Promise. People are, um, you know, I, I always say I have this uh, opportunity to see the best side of people at Family, and I really do, even during COVID, <laughs> even when things are crazy.